Okay, in this video we're going to do an example of uh, finding polar areas. In particular, we're going to find the region between two polar curves. Um, so this is kind of an interesting thing to do. So I want to find the area inside of r equals 3 sine of theta and outside of r equals 1 plus 2, uh, sorry, just 1 plus sine of theta. Um, and what I've done first is uh, drawn a picture of it. So my picture kind of isn't that great, um, but it's not terrible and it does enough uh, to let me solve the problem, which is all I ask of it. And so I need to understand the problem a little better. So first I'll figure out where they're equal to each other because um, those are kind of like collision points. So I need to know uh, values of theta where their r's are the same at the same time. So um, I get sine of theta equals one half and I know that that's going to be pi over six and five pi over six. So theta equals pi over six, theta equals five pi over six. And I want to better understand the region that I'm dealing with. Um, so if I put out uh, some radii at uh, theta equals pi over 6 and at theta equals pi over 2, I'm going to shade in the region uh, in question just between those bounds. And then the, the actual region is twice that. Um, so you can see it's the part that's on the other side of the y-axis there uh, would be the other part. So I'm going to do what I usually do. I'm going to find half of the region, then I'm going to double it. Um, I like doing that because it gets rid of the one half that's in front of the area integral. Uh, so let's do that. So I'm going to get two because I'm doubling it. I'm only finding one half of it, so I have to double. And then the quantity one half because that's a part of polar area. It's going to be the integral from pi over six to pi over two. And now here's what I usually do. I start at the origin and I start drawing a radius that's going to go through the region. And I'm going to stop the radius when I get to the outer curve because that's going to give me the bigger part of the area, and I'm taking the bigger part of the area, and I'm subtracting the smaller part. So on my drawing, I'm going to add in a radius. It shoots out. It goes all the way to 3 sine of theta. So that's my bigger thing, so that's what I'm going to start with. So uh, finding the area of a polar region that's bounded by two curves always kind of reminds me of finding uh, volumes of revolution, where there's two curves, because first you square, then you subtract. Um, so let's see what we get. Uh, that was my outer curve. So now what I'm going to do is minus, and I'm going to repeat the process. So I start at the origin, I shoot out a radius, uh, it hits 1 plus sine of theta, so I'm going to subtract the quantity 1 plus sine of theta, and then square that. So it's really just one big polar region minus one smaller polar region. I don't want to do this by hand, so I'm going to punch it into a calculator. I get pi, and if you were going to do this by hand, uh, when you're doing polar by hand, you frequently need to use the power reducing formulas, which are really just uh, rearrangements of cosine of 2 theta, uh, which is one of the most important of the trig formulas for that reason. It comes up a lot. Um, so that gave me pi. Now, of course, I could have done this in one shot, and it's not even really that hard to do it in one shot. Um, so I could have just done one half the integral from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6, and then it would have been the same integrand, right? The same thing inside the integral. Um, and I would have gotten the same answer, obviously. But anyway, uh, that's how I would do this particular problem. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.